Hi everyone, uh, we are going to discuss about DNS zone transfer. So in this video we will only discuss about the theoretical stuff but in the second video we will demonstrate using a tool that is DIG in Kali Linux machine. But here in this video we are going to discuss that what is actually DNS zone transfer and why do we need it. Now to understand this DNS zone transfer we will uh, first understand that what DNS itself is. So to understand it, let's say when we are using our computer and when and then we open our browser and in this browser we write, uh, we type any uh, domain name, so any URL, let's say google.com, bbc.co.uk. So the, you can see that these all are human readable names. And now this website can be hosted, let's say on this computer. And we are writing here the human readable names it means there should be someone who should be translating these human readable names to IP addresses and that is actually DNS which is already written here so DNS system is a system or this in this case is a server so that server is used to translate these human readable names to IP address so it means this request first goes to DNS DNS gives us the IP address and then after using that or after getting that IP address, this computer can directly reach this computer. So this is the basic operation of DNS. I have discussed the same operation in detail in some other video. Yes, so this is what a DNS is. And now what is DNS zone transfer? So now we have this DNS server and in this DNS server, we have like these uh, domain names and their IP addresses. So roughly we can say that DNS is like a phone book for the internet. So this, this, this database is actually saved in this server machine. And now to save this record, we not only have one server, but to make this system redundant, we can have another server like this one. And then we can have a copy here and the same redundant copy we can also have in another DNS server. So first DNS server is called primary DNS server and the second DNS server is called the secondary DNS server. So both of these, they hold this phone book or they hold the database. Now the secondary DNS server, so this is sorry, this is swapping. So this secondary server, so this secondary DNS server holds the redundant copy of the DNS record. And this primary server, so this primary server, this primary DNS server holds the master copy of DNS server. Now, these DNS server, uh, actually they hold a redundant copy of the mirror images. So now, if a user, if any administrator is going to make some changes in this primary DNS server, then the secondary DNS server may request these updates from primary server because this is uh, this would be difficult to for the network administrator or any guy to update all these entries in these uh, DNS servers so this is maybe like we can have multiple DNS secondary DNS server as well and in this case to update all these entry in these all DNS servers will be challenging so in this case these DNS server can actually request all these updates from the primary DNS server and primary DNS server can send back those all records. And during this transfer, one of the possibilities that, that the primary DNS server can transfer the complete record from this primary DNS server to the DN secondary DNS server and this is known as full zone transfer. And this may happen that instead of sending the whole record, this primary DNS server can only send uh, the updated information. So in that case, this is known as incremental zone transfer, where only a portion of the record is sent from primary DNS server to secondary DNS server. So it means this is needed uh, that DNS server can exchange this information. Now it means the primary DNS server should be enabled for uh, transferring this. It means DNS server with DNS zone transfer should be enabled on this DNS server. And if that feature is enabled on this DNS server, it means any user 
can send the same request to get a copy of the DNS record from this primary DNS server. And so it means if this feature is enabled, then we can say that this server is vulnerable to DNS zone transfer. And if any user is going to request for that record, then that server can actually send a complete list of all the record to this user. Can return a list of all subdomains available on that server. So let's say if we have any, let's say any domain, example.com, this is a domain, then all the subdomains from this, they can be sent to this user. So this is a vulnerability. And of course, this vulnerability is old vulnerability. We have multiple strategies to avoid this vulnerability from DNS server. We'll be discussing in some other video, but this was just the introduction that what DNS zone transfer basically is and why we need it. So we got the idea that these server machines are these DNS servers, they need to exchange this DNS record with each other. And for that, this DNS server should be enabled for zone transfer. And if this is enabled, then any outsider can also send a request. And as per this request, this DNS server can send all the record to this uh, bad guy or to this outsider user. So that is DNS zone transfer is and based on this feature or this vulnerability this can be exploited by any let's say hacker so that's it that was a bit introduction of dns zone transfer and in the second video we will demonstrate this using kali linux machine and hope to see you in that video